All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from a sunny, well, slightly overcast San Diego. But today I'm delighted to be to welcome all the way from the UK up in Liverpool near the, the north of England on the coast there, uh, Cara Armstrong. How are you doing, Cara? Hi, John. Thank you so much for having me. And yes, not so sunny here in the UK, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, and uh, Cara is a dynamic leader and visionary behind two distinct ventures, Jarvie and Co. And She Dreams She Did, with a deep-rooted passion for transforming businesses and empowering women entrepreneurs. Cara leverages over a decade of corporate experience to drive success across various industries. And what we're going to talk about today is building b2b sales strategies and and your framework for making sure that you get the commercial strategy correct therefore your sales strategy your go-to-market all of that then you know rolls in together and, and is uh, is consistent so uh, starting off just talk to me how did you, where did you come your your three-step process you're going to talk about where did that come from yeah, so I have had over a decade of corporate experience. So I had worked for some major pharmaceutical and medical device companies and some consumer goods companies. And I was fortunate fortunate enough to enter into business development within these within within these companies. And I was very, you know, customer facing and I looked at sales as quite a simplistic view when I started in all honesty that you know so as long as you were a good salesperson, then you could sell any product in the world. Right. <laughs> um, I love my naivety. I soon <laughs> learned otherwise. Um, and it got to a point in my career where I felt quite frustrated as a salesperson that I knew I was doing everything to the best of my ability and I knew I was executing what I was being told to execute. However, the sales weren't really coming in. So I was in a B2B environment and I was ultimately tasked with selling to large blue chip companies. And I had the opportunity to do an MBA and I, you know, over the two years really started to become quite obsessed with strategy. Mm -hmm. And I really started to learn that, you know, a solid foundation of a commercial strategy is ultimately what makes a business successful. And you can have the best salesperson in the world, but if you don't have all the other aspects of your commercial strategy in place, then that, that salesperson is really going to struggle to convert business. So I actually specialized within my MBA on commercial strategy and brand strategy to really try and understand like the root cause of what needed right. to be in place within a commercial strategy and mm -hmm. I then had you know the unique and fortunate experience to then use the framework that I had um, you know come up with within my MBA with some of the clients that I was working with from a B2B point of view mm -hmm. and really test to see whether or not the you know the framework that I believed was correct you know could be implemented yeah. and ultimately you know had the opportunity to take some products from you know concept to six figures and to seven figures and eight figures and you know I was you know, very fortunate to be able to do that. But what I did start to realize, you know, working with some friends and family and just, you know, the social media age that we're in, mm -hmm. that small businesses, you know, at that six figure point, were really struggling to then transition right. to that seven figure um, you know, milestone. And I think there's only 5% of businesses that actually ever reach that. Well, yeah, you be, yeah, the, the statistics are quite astounding if you go through them about, uh, about you know, revenue levels. Uh, but one thing you, you mentioned there just as interesting is the idea of strategy, because um, I think it was, uh, I think it's Lao Tzu in The Art of War, you know, he says, what is it? Uh, uh, tactics without, or it's a strategy without tactics is, a, is the longest way to, victory and then you know uh, tactics without strategy is just the noise before defeat and i feel that we're kind of a lot of people find it difficult to think strategically right they every a lot of people are very comfortable going tactical immediately and i think that's often what happens at businesses is they kind of do the strategy but they do it too quickly because they're, they're so desperate to get to execution absolutely and i think you know i think also sometimes strategy can 
people believe that a strategic plan is strategy. So I mm-hmm. think people feel quite com- um, comfortable when creating a strategy that if, you know, they have a definitive list of actions that they need to take, then they will get to, you know, the goal they want to get to. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, we're all guilty of it, that we've kind of interlinked planning and strategy to become this buzzword of strategic planning. Mm-hmm. And ultimately you know the things that tend to end up on that list are tactical and are things that you just want to tick off in order to kind of feel like you you've got momentum within your business and what I really like to encourage encourage the clients that I work with is to just really take a step back and look at strategy as you know quite innovative um Mm -hmm. you know creative process and it's not something that should be rushed and it's definitely not something that should be done only once a year you know when you're Mm. like okay come on let's do Mm. our annual strategic review it it should be an ongoing evolution within your business and something that should really make you think outside the box you know to to be different and to really understand what you need to do and the foundations that you need to have within your business in order to you know move to that next milestone yeah, and and when you start with your so let's talk through your process a little bit as you as you start with that, uh, you know, how do you help companies like maybe come back again to and revisit strategy? And as you say, you know it's something that you need to do regularly, but refocus on on the foundations before like worrying about the tactical execution. Yeah, so I think quite often clients come to me when, you know, they've either lost the momentum within their sales when they're trying to, you know, transition to seven figures, or they're quite aware that perhaps their sales cycles are quite long, that they're not converting, you know, sales as efficiently or at all as effectively as they want to. And they know that there's that there's a gap they've got to bridge in order to get to that seven figures. And it normally comes, unfortunately, from like a place of pain and frustration that you know things aren't optimized within their business and this is a you know a really great opportunity for me to really do like a strategy intensive and say okay what are you currently doing within your business and more often than not it is tactical things that they have been doing and not so much strategic things and it's a really great opportunity to like strip everything back and say okay I have a three-step framework. These are the non-negotiables that I work with my clients on, and they are all foundational within a commercial strategy. And then because obviously businesses that are already at that six-figure point, they have optimized parts of their sales and marketing. And then it's just a question of, you know, feeding the 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 foundations of the strategy into the rest of the more tactical things that, you know, ultimately do drive revenue. Mm -hmm. But if the foundations aren't there, then you're not ever going to really see, you know, your sales be fully optimized. Sure, sure. No, I mean, I think that's that's uh, absolutely true. And and I think then often when you do go back, and you probably experience this, when you do go back and pull it back to, to strategy and then also look at the execution of the tactics, you'll often find that people are doing a lot of things that they don't need to be doing or need to stop doing. And that that I always find is the hardest thing is to – because if you do a strategic session or strategy session with people, they'll be great at coming up with ideas of more things they should do, or we should do this, we should do that. But when you stop and say, okay, what are you going to stop doing? There's suddenly yeah. silence, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think businesses, when, you know, we do our strategic work, are ready to go they're like okay we we want to create a strategy that's so unique and is you know going to make us stand out in the market and you know once i explain you know the difference of strategy and tactics they're really excited to get going they're like okay like we really want to do this and i kind of have to just take it Mm -hmm. down a, a notch and part of my framework is we start with refining your the foundations of your strategy and within the foundations it's about customer research really understanding your customers deeply it's about making sure that you are addressing a critical unmet need Mm -hmm. so quite often I find businesses are you know solving a problem but they're not solving a critical problem or they're not solving a critical desire so there's a gap there that we have to look at before we then move into generating what makes them unique within their business Mm -hmm. and the 
fun, creative part of strategy. But those first two principles really have to be there before we then get into understanding, okay, how are we going to be unique? How are we going to win in the market? And how are you going to do it? Um, And ultimately, that then feeds into later parts of my framework. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's about trying to just reframe how you look at strategy and make sure that those foundations are always in place and always optimized. And, And how often do you find that the ideal customer profile or their thing has maybe it's not it's not well defined it's a little vague or it's a little broad or they haven't revisited it in a while Um, because that's often the hardest thing isn't it to get to say okay this is really our ideal customer and kind of narrow it down because people get a little antsy when you start to get (laughs) more targeted absolutely I know and I I I myself when I started doing this within my corporate life it feels it feels wrong. It feels like, you know, why would I go so niche with this? Because Mm -hmm. surely I'm going to, you know, miss out on all of this business. But ultimately, if you try and speak to everybody, you speak to nobody. Um, We're definitely... We're definitely in an age now where buyers are looking for different things and we're at saturation point. You know, everybody is constantly being sold to that they're kind of switched off a little bit to anything Mm -hmm. that feels, you know, too salesy. So now is a really critical time for businesses to really understand their customers on a much deeper level because you're then ultimately able to resonate with them and activate them to buy. So if you don't know them deeply, if you don't know their wants, needs, desires, aspirations what's keeping them up at night then you're not then able to later on in your commercial strategy you know implement market messaging and on sales calls be able to you know understand them deeply enough to activate them to buy yeah. so i know it feels scary and it, it doesn't mean that you only have to have one mm-hmm. you know ideal customer you can have a few but you have to know them really deeply and i think sometimes as well there's a bit of a misconception out there that you need to you know they need to have a specific job title you need to know what what their favorite restaurant is you know do they have a dog you know you don't have to know all of that because that can actually limit who you're speaking to what Mm -hmm. you need to know is what type of person you're speaking to and what their wants needs desires and aspirations are and once you're able to really understand that the rest is so easy you're then able to understand what a critical unmet need for them would be you're then able to generate a unique selling point that resonates deeply deeply with them because you know their wants needs desires and aspirations Mm -hmm. so it becomes such a more fluid process Mm -hmm. when generating a strategy if you really do know your customer at the very start of that process so what is step two of your process so with step two so i have refine which is Mm -hmm. the um ideal customer it's your critical unmet need and then it's um creating your unique selling point and then we have attract which is really looking at making sure you've got brand resonance Mm -hmm. so this is something that is becoming really critical that you know just because you have a business doesn't mean you have a brand yep And people are, you know, like I said, so oversaturated that they're looking for a business and a brand that really resonates deeply with them. And they feel almost like that business has been made directly to answer their, you know, their problems or desires. And, you know, quite often I find that there's not that deep resonance. There isn't a deep brand strategy. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, brand strategy can be looked at, you know, quite differently and not interlinked with commercial strategy. And they're, you know, they really should be looked at at the same time because Mm. it needs to flow within everything you're doing from like a sales and marketing point of view. Yeah. And Um, I think, and sorry, I just think part of the problem here is, uh, is that the, the concept of brand is, I don't think people fully understand people. A lot of people still think brand is like your logos, your, your, your Mm -hmm. colors, all of that. And they don't realize that brand is every aspect of your business that communicates you know everything you know every touch point in your company is is reinforcing or worse uh subtracting from your brand no absolutely i agree and i do think you know 
the 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 brand substance that you have is you know probably 80 percent of your brand strategy mm. and the visuals is probably 20 yep. percent and i know we all want to run to the visuals and the pretty looking things but there's so much more that needs to go into it and i look at it as kind of like an iceberg and the, the tip is you know the visuals but mm. underneath that water is so much that needs to go into understanding the substance of your brand and if you don't know your ideal customer and your met needs then you, you can't create a brand that's going to truly resonate so this is you know the middle foundation of my framework and we once we've kind of optimized that we're then able to look at all of the marketing and elevate that marketing to make sure that we're really clearly communicating to exactly what our ideal customer is mm -hmm. what their critical unmet need is how we are you a unique solution to their unmet needs and then also making sure that that brand strategy is just kind of sprinkled throughout the marketing to just really connect with buyers. Yeah. And I think also connect with internal in the organization, too, because I think that sometimes people forget. I mean, it's easy maybe in a small organization, but if your organization hopefully grows and scales a bit, it's important that everybody in the organization understands the strategy, understands the brand positioning, all of that, so yeah. that they can support it in every way. Because like I said, if if you call up customer service you're interacting with the brand how you're dealt with by customer service is a brand attribute at the end of the day and i think having everybody in the organization understand that and really uh, and really kind of take the brand on board is incredibly important oh, and it's ultimately what can change and cultivate culture you know, if people really deeply understand what the business stands for and where they're going and why they're doing it, then like you say, every touch point that, you know, communicates with a customer, it will resonate and it will radiate through them because they have that deep understanding of ultimately why they're there in the business. Yeah. So what's your, what's your step three? So step three is conversion. So, you know, this is a really critical part of a foundation within your strategy. And I think it's something that people can kind of jump jump to and you know they focus on oh i need to convert my customers i need to convert my customers and yes you do <laughs> but that's very hard if the other parts haven't been optimized so i really make sh i really dive into looking at the sales funnel right the the customer journey and really making sure that you know the learnings of and the foundations that we've built on are within that you know sales funnel to really make sure that we're connecting with potential customers at you know all the different uh, parts of their buyer's journey mm -hmm. and because i deal more with b2b clients you know there's a lot of customer facing time and um, then you also need to make sure that you have sales psychology within every aspect of you know your sales closing so you will have sales psychology within your marketing you will also use sales psychology when you are trying to close a customer mm -hmm. and this is often the thing i see that's missing most you know right understanding of you know different people need different things in mm -hmm. order to make buying decisions and you can't just you know sell the same way to everybody and expect them to convert into a buyer the same as you know the person before yeah no and it, and it's uh, it's interesting now because apparently there's five some people even argue six generations in the workforce for the first time in history so you have you know, your buyers and and oftentimes, as you know, in B2B, you're not selling to a single person, right? You may be selling to a group of people and yeah. each of them may have different needs, but also different ways of consuming information, et cetera. So it's, it, it, it's really important that you have that uh, wider strategy. And also you mentioned, um, the, the the fund the sales process because here's another thing i think it, it just kind of like what we talked about earlier with the uh with the customer profile i mean sometimes people think i have a sales process yeah when did you when did you put that together oh, a couple of years ago yeah have have you looked at it recently well no i mean do we need to and you go well, you have your customers have, have buyers changed at all in the last few years yeah. um so so revisiting the sales process is another important component yeah Oh, absolutely. And something that, like you say, is often overlooked. And I think, you know, sometimes you just assume that customers hasn't changed. But I think we've probably been in a very condensed, you know, with COVID and everything that mm -hmm. happened, 
there was a huge evolution on how we did business, on the expectations of, you know, B2B environments and what was needed. And, you know, going from all virtual, uh, sorry, in person to virtual mm-hmm. meetings, you know, the, the bias cycle has completely changed and we've had it in a very condensed period of time. So it's definitely something that, you know, you need to optimize. And, you know, if you're doing the, the beginning parts of your customer and market research, then it's it's quite easy to then up level it. But yeah. it's definitely something that will decrease the, the business's ability to convert if it isn't optimized. Yeah. So just in, in uh, uh, to conclude, just give me an example. You don't have to name the customer, but just give me an example of a customer you worked with with your process and and what the where they were and what the outcome was. Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah. So the, a good example was I worked with um, a business that was at the six figure mark, six figure mm-hmm. mark, and they had been very successful. They had had quite significant growth, and they were definitely on track the seven figures and there were some market changes and market shifts that happened quite drastically within their industry and there was an entrant that came in and you know not overnight but it felt like it kind of took significant market share and um you know they were now in decline and they had kind of doubled down on everything that they had been doing previously because it had ultimately been what had got them to that point and they said okay we just need to double down on what we're doing and we'll be able to kind of weather the storm and you know that they they tried that for about six months and they kind of realized okay this isn't really working let's try some new sales and marketing tactics you know let's try and change our content strategy right. let's up, up rev our marketing on our website and you know they, they tried all the things and ultimately you know when we got in touch they were kind of at that point of we don't know what to do because this new competitor has come in and we we feel like we've tried everything so we looked at the framework that I've just discussed, the refine, refine, attract and convert framework. And we just looked at each of the elements that we've just you know, looked at within the conversation. And ultimately, because there had been such a, a change that they had not understood that the, their customer had grievances and objections within the marketplace. And this competitor had come in and had been silently listening to these objections. Mm and had recreated effectively a business model that had answered the objections of their customers. So it it meant that they hadn't been close enough to their customers to really understand if there was anything that they could do differently or notice that there had been a shift in buying behavior. And that the unique selling point that they had previously had, you know, wasn't wasn't right. going to resonate anymore because mm-hmm. there's been a shift in the market. So we really spent our time on you know that 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 first part of my framework right. to really lay those foundations and say okay effectively we have to start from scratch here because somebody has come into this industry and completely shaken it up and you're now going to have to do something really quite bold and different to recapture you know your your customers. Right. It starts with understanding them better. Mm -hmm. And it starts with creating a customer centric, unique selling point, not a business centric selling point, something that is really relevant to your customer. Because if you don't adapt and you don't look at it from that point of view, then, you know, this isn't changing. This isn't an overnight, oh dear, we're going to recover from this. So it's definitely an intense um, couple of months working with the business. But, you know, they are, it's been six months since we kind of, you know, did our intensive and things are definitely starting to pick up. Mm. I think the, the thing is that there is such a belief that everything is kind of a quick win. And, you know, just because you've laid these foundations yeah. up, we're going to be, you know, Thing, things are long-term, sustainable, competitive advantage. That's what I say to my clients. We're looking at this long-term mm-hmm. and you don't want to get too taken away by your competitors. You, you, yeah. should, you should be more concerned about your customers than you should be about your competitors. Yeah. Because it's space for everyone. It's when you don't know your customer well enough that somebody's going to take it away from you. So. Yeah, I think there was a, a shift in mentality within the business, but yeah, definitely a positive experience from you know really stripping it back. 
Yeah, excellent. And you're correct. I mean, things always take longer than people would like. And we live in this kind of instant shortcut culture where people think everything should happen, you know, literally overnight. Uh, but yeah, but if you're going to do a shift like that in your business, it's going to take a it's going to take a little bit of time. But uh, well, that was fantastic. Uh, yeah. Listen, thanks very much, Cara. All of Cara's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Oh, yeah. So thank you so much. Yeah. So I have uh, two businesses. Jarvi and Co is, you know, more specifically just for B2B businesses, where I really help them move from six to seven figures. And I then also do have She Dreamed She Did, which is a more female focused business, where we look at more some of, some of the foundations from more of a mindset point of view, as well as the commercial strategy foundations that are needed. And again, my core focus and expertise is really, you know, taking businesses from that six to seven figure milestone. Perfect. Well, listen, thanks again, Cara. This has been fascinating. Thank you for watching and listening.